Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy. And today I got the privilege of actually reviewing a movie that isn't even out yet, which is really cool. I always love getting early access to stuff if I can. And this time it came from a friend and someone who was on the show recently on our Parasite podcast, which is our friend Tajaya from Blacktastic Media, who is just a very creative dude, very awesome. If you haven't checked out my conversation with him, I highly recommend that you do. You'll get a little bit of a peek behind the movie I'm about to discuss right now, and also check out his channel and subscribe to him because he has a lot of great behind the scenes videos on all the stuff he makes. He makes movies, like short films, documentaries, he puts up poetry. He does a lot of really creative things and movie reviews on top of it. Like he, this guy is just kind of a jack of all trades, but he's very, very talented. And he was very awesome to talk to him after knowing him online for like three or four years now. And we finally had a conversation and, you know, put it up on, on the channel. So I'll put a link to the video down below where I chat with him and also put a link down to, below to his channel. So you can check out Sarah, which is his new film that comes out on October 28th free on YouTube, so you can check it out for free when it comes out. So again, link down to his channel below, subscribe to him so you don't miss out. Put you know, Turn on those notification bells too, so that way when Sarah drops on the 28th, you know and remember that you can check it out and watch it. And it is a runtime is about an hour, um, which is pretty interesting because I've worked on big budget movies, I've worked on small budget movies, you know, no budget movies. <laughs> I've worked in everywhere. And hearing him tell the story of making this film was very interesting to me because a lot of people think, oh, all right, movies are done one way or two ways, maybe. But no, movies can happen a bunch of different ways. And what's really neat about this one, real quick before we get into it, is that Tajaya had a friend who lived up on Saw of the Island who actually owns part of the island and owned a pirate ship. <laughs> and they basically said, hey, I, you know, this is all the stuff I have. He went up, visited, saw it all, and was like, can I go work with a friend, write a movie, come back here and film it next year? And they were like, sure. And then when he came back, unfortunately, it was in the middle of COVID and they had uh, extreme limitations when it came to stuff. And in, in, in fact, uh, there was all kinds of stories about his lead actress getting stung by bees and she had to miss like a day or two of filming. And it's just, these are things that happen when you don't have a big budget on stuff. And even sometimes big budget movies, they run into problems. They're just different types of problems, uh, but they, they run into stuff too. And so it was just fascinating to hear him talk about this movie. And as far as this movie goes, we'll dive right in. This is going to be non-spoiler uh, because I don't want to ruin anything because uh, there is some cool twist in this, but they came right at the end and in the post credits. So I'll just say like, I'm not going to say what the post credit scene is, but definitely watch until then because I had questions about this movie. Uh, some things narratively that I don't know if I understood or if were explained very well. So I would say one of the big things I had a question about is answered in the post credit scene. So if, if you're paying attention to the movie, definitely wait till the end credits because it might answer a, a couple of your questions. But I still don't think all my questions were answered, which could be good and bad. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but I do rate movies differently when it comes to big budget stuff and when it comes to indie films. And after hearing Tajaya's story, I really wanted to put a little bit more thought into my review here now that I understood kind of his limitations because rarely do I get to know what limitations people run into when they make their films. And this time I was exposed to, you know, and, and revealed his limitations at times. And it kind of did change my perspective a little bit because now I was like, you know what, that's amazing that he even finished this project considering some of the stories he told me. So again, I'll put a link to that episode down below. But this movie, and I will, I'll cut right to it finally, it starts off and it has this narrator and they're basically explaining a little bit of what's going on. But that's where I the editor in me comes in. So like I said, the, the runtime of like one hour, I would say as an editor, it feels like a little too long. I, I, I usually in short films, when you're making indie films, um, I, I think like 20 minutes, you know, or less is a good time because then things are moving, things are intense, things are, you know, happening. This movie though is definitely a different approach. You know, Tajaya is clearly, you know, with this film is telling, is taking his time for a reason. Um, he wants to build up uh, to that ending which I like. So the basic premise here is that you have, and he said it in the episode where I, I talked to him, where it's this pirate ship that is haunted. Uh, it has a, a rich history, this pirate ship. Basically, there was a pirate that lived on the ship uh, or you know, someone on the ship that lived there uh, that ran the ship. And he went out, to, you know, and as they were bringing slaves over from Africa to the U.S., he fell in love with one of the slaves. And that was forbidden back then, it was taboo. So when it was revealed that he had that, uh, that he had that love for, for Sarah, the, the young lady, or I guess he named her Sarah because slaves back then didn't have names. So he named her Sarah after his boat because that was the name of his boat. 
And then they ended up both getting killed. She was hung and he was asked or forced asked. <laughs> he was forced to walk the plank of his own ship. Um, so a very tragic backstory that links to this ship. And that's what happens. There's this young girl in modern day that is now going to Savi Island. She's visiting an old friend. Um, and then when she gets there, uh, she learns about this ship a little bit. And it's it's actually on the, the docks near her friend's house. And so she goes over and investigates the ship. And by setting foot on it, uh, this ghost is awoken and now is is kind of keeping an eye on this young lady uh, you know, in present day, keeping an eye on her because, you know, feeling those old feelings of, of his love for Sarah and stuff. And so uh, so it's, it's neat. So the cast is just two actresses through the whole movie. And then you have, uh, you know, Tajaya, who's kind of uh, providing the voice of the narrator slash ghost. Um, you have him there. And I kind of like that because when it opens, the movie opens with a skull. Uh, that's kind of his promo image. And the skull is talking to you. Um, but again, like my editor side comes out and when you start the movie, it has like, like when I, when I see a movie like this, uh, I go, okay, there's six minutes of, you know, slow moving, you know, shots of like the, the city, you know, and, and kind of like these still images, uh, you know, of the city and, and the place that they're filming, um, and the location of the film. Um, then there's like, you know, uh, slow moving images of, or like a slow motion moving through the cabin of the, the pirate ship and stuff. And that's kind of eating up the first couple minutes of the movie and then you have a narration when you have the skull pop in and he's basically saying like hey i'm the crypt keeper kind of and i'm here to tell you a story um so you have that going on for a few minutes and you actually don't meet your main characters to about 12 minutes in and again i know that's all intentional and that's what tajaya wanted for the film he wanted that build up but for me i, I was like okay as an editor i, I would probably have like been like hey you know we maybe we trim some of this down and, and get to the the lead characters a little faster and then pepper some of this stuff in later on in the movie to kind of work on that balance but again that's just like my nitpickiness or how i would do it my way and uh, and and obviously tajaya has his way of doing it and I, I overall i think it worked i just for me i just there was that editor side that would keep coming out at times going oh maybe we could trim this or we could do that and sometimes hard for me to shut that part of my brain off uh, but what i do like about this though is and i think mike z even said this in his review because i went and checked that out for a minute um, he said exactly what was on my mind. You have two actresses through this whole movie, but uh, you feel the presence of the ghost throughout the whole thing. And I think it's because the, the beginning establishes the ghost so well. So when you get to the point of uh, the other characters coming in, you feel like those, those eyes are on them the whole movie. And then when you get to the end and you kind of see some of the reveals there, and then the, the, especially the post credit scene of, of who and every, you know, what, uh, who's involved and what, what's going on. Um, it, it starts to paint a, a clearer picture. Uh, so, so overall, like I really enjoyed watching this. Like I, you know, again, I think it's fascinating knowing about the making of it going, you know, even going uh, into watching it. When I, when Tajai asked me to watch this first, I just saw it and I took a bunch of notes, but I had questions. So I was like, you know, why did, why did you do this? Why did you do that? But I got to ask some of those or some of those came out in our conversation. So then I knew the answers and rarely do I get the answers. So it made me go back and go, OK, well, I maybe no, don't like the scene too much. But now I understand the limitations he had in filming that scene. So it made me understand it a little bit more. And so so that's what I mean about like, uh, you know, having a clearer picture when reviewing this film. So I actually went back and watched this a second time after I talked to, J to Jaya and was like, okay, now I, I understand some of these scenes or what he was trying to go for. Um, but I feel like there are times for some criticisms of the movie, for me personally, I would probably still edit it down a little bit to keep it a little tighter. Um, and I would also feel work on the narrative just a little bit because some of that backstory about the ghost and, and the story with Sarah, some of that is not crystal clear not that it needs to be i mean i guess you know it's ambiguous enough to where you can kind of have an interpretation on it and i think that's what tajaya was going for but there's some things in this where i'm like i wish this was a little clearer or i wish this dialogue scene was a little shorter and right to the point um but uh but again these are just all just kind of what i would do in this situation um which i try not to do when i review things i try not to impose of what i would bring to the table um but in this case since i knew so much about behind the scenes I'm like, oh, okay, well, now I know what his thought process was and why he did it this way. But for me, I still had some of these criticisms left. Like, I still feel like it's a little long um, at times. I feel like some scenes uh, kind of go on a little longer than, um, than are needed. But again, that's just my opinion on them. Um, but I think even though I, I think some of it can be trimmed, I will say, even feeling that way, as I watch the movie, the ghost stuff at the beginning went on a little too long for me. 
but then I really felt the ghost presence throughout the rest of the movie. So clearly something was done right. Even if I, I don't agree with it, I think something was still done right. So if I had to rate this movie, I would say I'd probably give it like a 6.5. Um, I'd probably between that and a 7. Like, I know I seem to give out a lot of 7s and stuff, but that's because this movie is, is different. Like for me, I, I think I was originally just going to give it a flat 6. But the reason I went up a little bit is because after hearing Tajaya's stories and, and hearing how he made this movie and some of the obstacles he had, to me, I was like, you know what? There was hard work put into this. And even if my editor brain came out you know, a couple times in the movie saying, oh, trim this or do that or pace this differently. Um, the hard work was still done and, and the final product is still here. Like we can all watch this. I can't tell you how many times I've been on sets and worked on indie films where the movies never came out. The people just gave up on it. They filmed a couple scenes and they, they just gave up or they finished filming it and never edited it or realized how much hard work it was to edit and they never bothered. I mean, I can't, I worked on a ton of projects like that. So for Tajaya to get people together to film this movie to uh, during COVID with all these obstacles that he had and all these other things that happened during the filming of it where he had to think on his feet, it's amazing it got finished. And so that in and of itself is a massive accomplishment. He should be very proud of that. And I'm sure he is. And he should go check out his channel. He's got a lot of other projects over there that he's very proud of that he worked just as hard on and stuff. So please go support this guy's work. Uh, but for me, I would say six and a half to seven I understand more of the limitations he had now, and I rarely get that, like I said earlier. I rarely know what obstacles and limitations people have when they make films, so I do factor that in. And yes, he's a friend, and so like, but I'm not trying to just give him a high score because he's a friend. I also want to be constructive, and I want to be honest with you guys, and for me, that's my honesty. I feel like this movie could be trimmed a little bit. I feel like some of the narrative uh, needs to be a little clearer. I think the backstory is amazing, and I don't think you get enough of it in this movie. I, I know he didn't have the budget for it, but it would have been cool to film a couple flashback scenes of showing, you know, um, the boat Sarah with its uh, original captain and the, the woman he fell in love with the the from Africa. Like, I would have liked to see seen a, some of that, or at least do it in, like, artwork. You know, if he didn't have the budget for, um, you know, to film it, maybe hire an artist to do a, a couple drawings and put that in the opening credits. Like, there's just things like that that I think could have... Um, and maybe enhance that that backstory a little bit more because I, I thought it was a very rich backstory. And when he explained it to me on the episode, when I talked to him, I was like, man, I don't remember it being that detailed in the movie. And then so I watched it again and was like, okay, it's there, but it just doesn't stick like, like the way he said it to me in that interview. And so maybe something to help make it stick more, at least for me, I, I, you know, other people might disagree with that, but, uh, but for me, I just needed a little bit help with that backstory, which I think is so amazing and so fantastic and great setup for this film, but it, I didn't feel like it, it, you know, shined as brightly as it could have in the film. Uh, but those are just my thoughts. You know, if you have same thoughts, different thoughts after you see the movie, let me know what they are down below, but also please like comment on his video. Let your thoughts be known over there. I mean, that guy, you know, Black Classic Media, his channel, Tajaya, like he, he deserves the support. He deserves the comments, the likes, you know, the subscriptions, all that stuff. This guy works very, very hard and him and his friends work their butts off to make this movie. And whether I am 100% on board with it or in the middle, like I am like six and a half, seven, um, or if, even if I hated the movie, no matter what it is, that's a massive accomplishment of what this guy did with his team and they finished this film and that's amazing. And I look forward to more projects of his in the future for sure. Uh, so let me know again if you uh, what, do you what do you think of my thoughts on this movie if you want, but I really encourage you to go to his channel and show some love over there and check out his hard work because he's a very talented dude and I'm very honored and happy to know him for sure. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you all in the future. Peace.